Hi, I'm Alison and a warm welcome to the China Repair Studio. So today I thought I would show you how to paint on a pottery ceramic tile with your own individual design. But before I do, if you haven't subscribed before, please subscribe, please like and also please share. Right, so I have here three tiles. I've got a dark blue one and a sort of teal, sort of a sea green, I suppose, colour and a ivory cream colour. And I thought what I would do with these, by having different tones, I would use different colour paints and just show you the different type of variety of paints you can use on tiles. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to, on the cream tile, I'm going to use a powder pigment and I'm going to use this ultramarine deep. So I thought I would demonstrate that you can actually use powder pigments on tiles for your own design. But I'm also going to do a combination of powder pigment with acrylics and you can mix and match them. It doesn't have to be one or the other, it can be both. So I thought by using the ultramarine, and I think this one is a cerulean blue, I'm going to mix them together and on this lovely colour tile here, we're going to just go for a slightly different tone. And then on my darker tile here, on this blue as your blue colour, I thought I would just go for a white colour, which is a hundred percent, it's just a, an acrylic professional range um, a colour paint. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take We've got some little bottle tops I collect. So we'll take our bottle tops and we'll start mixing. We will also need some ceramic glaze. Now I've got Rustins here and it is getting very difficult to get hold of. If you haven't got Rustins and can't get hold of it, and to be honest, it's pretty expensive. There is a, I think it's Windsor and Newton acrylic ceramic glaze. And I'm sure that is just as fine. That will do the job as well. And that's readily available in America and also in England on Amazon. But I'm sure you also you could get it in your local art store. I've also got some, a, some water in an old mug and a variety of paint brushes. Now I have got another video um, I did a few months ago on paint brushes, if you'd like to look at that. Um, but I think the paint brush I'm going to use today is this one which is, I think it's a mixture, but it's mainly sable. What I like about sable, it is the best quality and you get a good point, um, particularly if you're doing artwork. Now, I also have started to actually draw a design of the sort of thing that I want to put onto my tile here. So I thought I would go for almost like a Delft look, which I have in my um, in my dining room fireplace again i have done a video on it and you can see my fireplace in a in another video um which i think i can't sorry i can't remember the name but it's got a welsh dresser on the front on the um thumbnail but anyway i've drawn a couple of um illustrations here of some very naive flowers and just something i'm going to put in the corner of each so it's almost like an English, or maybe I would say English Delftware, but probably more like a Dutch Delftware design. So what we're going to do first, I think we'll start off by just using powder pigment. So if we take our first tile, now this is a um, pottery ceramic tile, but obviously it's been glazed, which is fine. We can still paint over a glaze and then we're going to glaze it afterwards to protect it. Otherwise, if you paint on it, you'll be able to scratch it off. So here's our tile. And I'm just going to take our powder pigment and a little bottle top. And I, this is where a cocktail stick comes in really useful. Um, so I'm just going to place this on the side here. And I'm just going to get just a little bit into here. Powder pigments, um, you know, you get a lot for your money. I mean, they're quite expensive to buy, 
parts. One of these would last you probably a lifetime. I mean, they do last for years and years. A little bit actually does go a long way. So I'll just put that down there. Always put the lid back on because it tends to blow away. You know, even if you just breathe on it, you know, you end up with bits of blue everywhere. Um, depending on obviously what colour you're using. So put the lid on, that's back there. And then I'm going to mix it with a little bit of water and some cer ceramic glaze. We'll actually hold it in place. So we've got our water. And then first of all, I'm going to mix it with an older so with an older brush. You don't want to use it with a pointed brush, otherwise you will ruin the brush. So we've got some water here. I'm just going to add it in with the glaze. Maybe a bit more. Oh, sorry, in with the paint. There we go, that's looking good. I think the only negative with having powder pigment is that you it does take a long time. So you want to make sure every single little bit of powder is actually sort of dispersed and gone into the water. Um, right, so once we've done that, we're going to add a little, just a little bit of the ceramic glaze. Actually, I'm just going to get another one of these. Right, so I've got a cocktail stick. You just want to add, you don't want to add too much, just a little bit, just to hold it in. So then you just want to just put a couple of drops in. Again, with a ceramic glaze, make sure you straight away put the lid on, otherwise it dries very quickly. And then we're going to mix. Right, I'm going to do this freehand today. You know, when you're doing this, there's no right or wrong way. You know, just do, just be as free as you want. You can paint whatever you want. But I thought I would just paint a flower and some corners. So I'm just going to put that into there for a second and quickly just dry that off. Otherwise, never leave a brush in the water because you end up ruining the bristles. Right, so we've got our nice stable brush here i'm just going to add just a tiny bit of paint here and we're going to start painting now i'm going to copy this part here and into the corners so i'm just going to move and take our our paint as i say it doesn't have to be perfect and we're just going to do a little twizzle around A bit more there and the thing is if you think you've made a mistake and it's not how you wanted it you can always wipe it off and start again so there we are that's our first small design and you'll find this will dry very quickly as well so we do another design here we'll go slightly faster now pick up speed okay it doesn't have to be perfect and then I'm going to do these sides first. Right, okay, and then again, I guess I'm going to go to an angle because I do find it easier. That's another one. And then we're going to do the last one here. Again, once you get to this corner, it's slightly more tricky because you don't want to be... touching any of the previous right okay so we've got our corners there now I'm going to do a flower design so I think I'll do the large one so again just add in and you know there's no right or wrong way they can be all different so I'm just going to go cross and up like that and then I'm going to do maybe like that. Obviously, you can spend more time. And another one there. 
and then I'm going to go up here. You can add some thickness if you like, like I have here. And it just gives it a different effect. It doesn't have to be all the same consistency. Can, you know, it can make it slightly more interesting. And then I'm going to do one down there. And I think we'll do a smaller flower on this. So probably maybe about there. And then you know, and you just and just keep painting away. I do love this colour, as I said before, this is ultramarine deep and it's such a beautiful blue colour. Okay, so for instance, we have our first tile here. So I'm just going to leave this to dry for a few moments and then I'll get on with the others and then hopefully that may be dry enough for me to just glaze over. So that's the first tile. And again, I'm just going to, it just shows you, I just want to show you the dark. You can use a dark colour with a light, whichever you like really. Could be more centralised, but maybe on the next one. So again, rinse our brush. Now, what I'm going to do now is use the mixture. So let's get this tile here. So I've already got this blue in here. I might just add a tiny bit more. So that's the powder pigment. And then I'm going to just First of all, just put some water in there to disperse, make it nice and runny. Perfect. And then we're going to take and mix our acrylics. So this is a beautiful cerulean blue. Just take a bit there. Just add a bit in, drop it in. Again, always lids on so they don't dry out. And then we're going to mix it again. Put some water there. I'm just going to mix it together. It might end up just being a slightly lighter colour. So as I say, I just want to show you that you can mix. So if you think, oh, I can't get hold of that colour of powder pigment, you know, it's easier sometimes to find something which is actually um, acrylic. It seems to be a lot more on the market. Right, so we'll take our rustins. As I say, if you can't get hold of this, just um, the, um, what is it, the Windsor and Newton. All right, so there we go. I'm just going to give this a mix now. Now, I do find using acrylics, it's definitely smoother, um, so you may find that easier. Right, so let's just do a bit of painting on here. I think I'll do for I'll go for the corners again. Maybe a slight variation on on the flower. So if we just take a lovely, a nice sable brush with a nice point, good point. I put plenty on on this time. So maybe make it it's slightly thicker in consistency. If you do find it too thick, you can always add more water in, and start with the corner. I'm going to go up across and we'll just do up I mean you could just do crosses if you wanted to you don't 
it doesn't have to be perfect as I say but you could do some practicing on some pieces of paper before you start so it gives you you know a really good good idea of the sort of things you can do make these slightly smaller and maybe another one here and then we are just do something as you can see it's slightly darker so it's not it doesn't show up so much as the cream and it's always good to just have a little practice and these would look great in a kitchen or in a um, utility room so let's go for another flower so I think I'm going to start here and go up not so much of a twist this time I've got to say by doing this actually it's just made me realize that the powder pigment does actually work better it's good to experiment and actually use this as a demonstration because I'm, I'm finding the powder pigment is actually what is working better than what I'm using at the moment which is the acrylic so the acrylic isn't working as well which is very interesting and that's with half and half you can see it's let me see if we can use more water with that see if that makes a difference no still not as good i think i prefer just using powder pigment And you can do the centre of the centre of the flower there, and then I'm just going to do. I mean, you can find so many designs on Pinterest, on in magazines, on the internet. There's so much out there, so you can really find something you like. And then keep moving across and I think we had a few things up here and then come up here and one along there now as I said before when you compare it that's definitely it's not drying as quick and I actually think this one is being the paint applied so much easier and that's actually interesting with the powder pigment there you go now I did say we were going to use just the acrylic on the darker one so we we'll see what 100% acrylic color is like on the darker one there Let's just take those out so it's not left in and let's take a couple there again when you are working with paints always make sure that you've got something on your um, small kitchen roll or a towel just to protect your surfaces right so I think we use a fresh one here again so we've got now this is the professional range I'm using with Windsor and Newton I always go for professional when I'm doing the professional range the quality of pigment is so much better so I would highly recommend that right so there we are so we're just I'm just going to add a little bit of water and some ceramic glaze here
again another cocktail stick and just put a few bits on you don't need too much just a little bit it will to help set it in really so what right let's just give that a mix all right let's see how it goes on here right so again we're going to start with the corners you don't have to start with corners if you think oh, I might touch the corners you can always start in the middle um, I always like to do something that <laughs> goes slightly different so let's go for give that a go So it starts to sort of stand out on a darker. Nice point. It's quite good experimenting to see which way works better. And it's always good to experiment and now you don't know until you try these things. So again, another angle is going to grip up, and that's what quite. As you can see, that's quite white there. So what I would probably do is take some kitchen roll and just wipe it off. So you can always redo. It's not set in stone, so to speak. So let's go for this again. right okay so we've done that so let's go for our a bit more water let's go for our flower now i might do a different flower on this one so let's go we can start from there one fell swoop we go up to about there Now, by using the acrylics, it's quite interesting. You actually almost can see through it places. It's not, um, the, the paint isn't consistent. It's nice. It's definitely thicker. Um, let's go do something down here. I mean, gosh, you could do, you know, the world is your oyster. You could do bumblebees, all sorts of things. And actually, and, and colour combinations for your room. And then I'm just going to if we go a little bit further up until we reach about here. And then I think I'll do some lines. And then we'll just do our flower. Some bits. Coming along there. So there we are with our other tile. As I say, this is on a dark one with a white. As I say, I'm not, I, it's good, but I do prefer using, I think, the powder pigment, interestingly enough, to the acrylic. Still gets a good, you know, you, you can experiment with how much water ratio of water and ceramic glaze um, may make a difference probably would actually so that's our third tile 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually, with the first one, which I can see has actually dried. So once you've got your tile and you've painted whatever you want on it, you want to actually seal it in. Um, although this does have the glaze in it to help hold it in place, you do want to seal it so it doesn't come off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay that down and I'm going to get a flat brush. Um, flat one's better because then you don't get lines. And I'm just going to take the ceramic glaze. And again, you don't need very much of this. This will probably just do. Okay. Always put the lid on straight back. Oops, it's already on a bit there. Right. Oops, dripping. Bit on there, that's it. Bit there, that's it. So once we've got our ceramic glaze, I'm just going to put that in there so it doesn't drip too much. We are now going to just glaze over literally what we've done. Now you could glaze over the whole lot, depending if you know if you want to see marks or not, which also really depends on the type of tile you have. But even if you just glazed bits like that, just to secure the painting, you may have to hold it to the light. If you wanted to brush stroke, so if you were holding it to light, you could actually do it in big sweeping motion of the glaze. But I've just done the individual, individual bits that we've actually um, painted there. So again, that's straight into water. Just take the glaze off before it hardens and then just dry that off. So again, once the other two have dried, the other two tiles, I'll glaze this as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. I know it's a bit of a long one, but it was quite nice to experiment, really. It was a rainy day today in it here in England, so I thought it's a day for experimenting and having a bit of fun doing a bit of painting. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you haven't subscribed, um, please subscribe, please like and please share. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. OK, bye.